Mm, hello, everyone. Before I give my presentation, I want to give a lot of thanks to all my tutoring members. Thanks for taking time to read my PhD thesis. Thanks for the insightful remarks that really help improve my thesis a lot. Thank you. Uh, now let's talk about uh, uh, my research. Uh, the title of my PhD thesis is a project control with resource and budget constraints. In chapter one, we will talk about the introduction. Project management is the discipline of planning, uh, organizing, and managing resources to finish the project successfully. The discipline is referred to as the dynamic scheduling. Dynamic scheduling always consists of three phases. The baseline schedule, the risk analysis, and the project control. During the baseline scheduling, a baseline schedule is established to specify the start and the finish time of project activities. The risk analysis identify high risk parts of the baseline schedule. The main, uh, the, the main goal of project control is to identify is to identify project problems or, or opportunities by measuring the project progress and comparing this progress with the baseline schedule such that corrective actions can be taken to bring the project in danger back on track. Since the deviations from the baseline schedule uh, are inevitable during project execution, uh, the project control process is key to finish the project on time and within budget. There are three processes in project control determining control points, project monitoring, and corrective action taking. Uh, for, determin uh, for determining control points, the control points are defined as the timing to monitor the project progress and take corrective actions. Project monitoring is the process to measure the project progress and, and evaluate whether this progress is acceptable or not. If the progress is unacceptable, the warning signals that indicate the project is in trouble are generated. In literature, there are two prevalent project monitoring approaches, top-down project monitoring and bottom-up project monitoring. The left figure illustrates the top-down project monitoring. During, for example, during project execution, the project progress is uh, measured and compared with the predefined tolerance limits. If the measured project progress drops, if the measured project performance drops below the tolerance limits, the warning signals are generated. Uh, in the bottom-up project monitoring, during project execution, the activity progress is measured and compared with the certain threshold value. If the activity progress is above the threshold value, which means that this activity is in danger and might cause project delays, therefore warning signals are generated. Once the warning signals are generated, the project manager needs to take corrective actions. Uh, in literature, there are three types of corrective actions. Activity crashing, variability reduction, and fast tracking. Activity crashing is achieved, uh, is achieved uh, by reducing the activity duration with increased costs. Variability reduction is used to reduce the project duration by reducing the activity variability with additional effort. Fast tracking aims at reducing the project duration by executing the presence related activities in parallel. What we discussed previously are the processes, are the processes of project control. Mm, however, in practice, however, in practice, project executions are always constrained with budget and resource. To study the project control process, the side effects of resource and budget constraints should also be considered. If, uh, for example, if we include the resource constraints. Corrective actions do not always reduce the project duration due to the resource conflicts. Um, 
if we consider budget constraints, corrective actions do not always corrective actions cannot always be taken when needed. Based on the project control process and the strain limitations, two questions are uh, we put forward two questions. First, how do strain limitations affect the project control process to achieve the project success? Second, how do the control points affect the project control process and the strain limitations? Our chapters two, three, and four answer the first question, while our chapter five answers the second question. Uh, now let's look at the first question and start with the chapter two. Uh, in chapter two, we will talk about project control with budget limitations. Mm, in practice, um, uh, the budget uh, in practice, the budget for taking corrective actions is always limited. This budget is not all. This this budget is not always available at the initial stage of the project. But uh, this budget this budget is not always available at the initial stage of the project, but released gradually with the project progress. To make full use of the budget, we allocate the budget to different project phases for repairing project delays. Uh, the general idea is the budget is assigned according to project specific characteristics, such as the time, cost, time, cost, and risk. In this chapter, we propose four different approaches to allocate the budget. The EV approach makes use of the earned value matrix uh, and uh, uh, measures the project progress using cost units. The ES approach is an extension of the EV approach. The ED approach um, makes use of earned duration matrix and measures the time progress of the project. The AR approach makes use of the project risk information. Mm. Makes you, uh, the AR approach makes use of the project risk information to allocate the budget. In doing so, uh, the, uh, um, in doing so, risky phases will receive more but uh, will In doing so, risky phases will receive more money to take corrective actions. Mm, when we discuss the uh, what. Uh, 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 what we discussed, uh, what we discussed, uh, what, what we discussed is the normal version to allocate the budget. However, uh, uh, allocating uh, allocating the budget in an increasing or decreasing version may lead to better results. An increase, uh, an increasing version, uh, starts with a relatively low budget allocation at the early stage but increases with the project progress. The increasing version is designed for projects where the, early, where the project information at the early stage is not always adequate or sufficient, but the quality increases with the project progress. A decreasing version follows an opposite behavior, starting with the relatively high budget allocation, but decreasing with the but decreasing with the project progress. The decreasing version is designed for projects where the corrective actions at the early stage may have a significant impact on the rest of the project. To validate our budget allocation approaches, some experiments are performed. The results show the ED approach performs well in project control which means allocating the budget to project phases with the more duration accrues is beneficial for taking corrective actions. The results also show the increasing version is preferred for top-down project control with limited budget, while the decreasing version is better for uh, top-down project control with unlimited budget. In this chapter, we will talk about the risk analysis with resource constraints. 
uh, the goal of this chapter is to review the SRA metrics with the resource constraints. As we discussed in the introduction, the uh, risk analysis identifies high risk parts of the baseline schedule using the SRA metrics. The SRA metrics are based on the network analysis, which means the activity delays only affect the successors. However, in resource constrained projects, Activity delays not only affect the successors, but also, uh, but also, but but also might delay the other activities when the resources are induced. Therefore, in resource constrained projects, the SRA metrics may not provide accurate activity information. Therefore, uh, 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 in this chapter. The traditional SRA metric, the traditional SRA metrics are extended. Um, the traditional SRA metrics are extended to the resource constrained project test, which are referred to as the RCSRA metrics. Uh, once the RCSRA metrics are determined, the project manager needs to select activities for taking corrective actions. Uh, two activity selection strategies are defined. The normal strategy and the sequential strategy. The normal in the normal strategy, um, activities with the top X percent RC, uh, RCSRA values are selected for corrective actions. This approach works well when um, what, uh, this approach works well for projects. For this approach works well for projects without resource constraints. However. Um, in resource constrained projects, uh, corrective actions corrective actions may cause new uh, resource or precedence uh, conflicts, and hence prolong the project duration. Therefore, a sequential strategy is designed. Uh, the sequential strategy also focuses on the activities uh, 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 in this strategy. Uh, in this strategy, we still focus on the activities with the high RCSRA values, but only activities with actions result in a mixed band reduction are selected. Once the activities for corrective actions are selected, the project manager needs to take corrective actions. Two types of corrective actions are considered. Reducing the activity duration with increased resource demand and reducing the resource demand with increased activity duration. After taking corrective actions, the remaining project execution may not be feasible due to the resource conflicts. Therefore, it is necessary to reschedule the remaining project, project duration. Um, therefore, it is uh, uh, therefore it's necessary to reschedule the remaining project execution. We, uh, until now, we discussed the process of determining the RCSRA metrics, selecting the activities for corrective actions, uh, taking corrective actions, and reschedule the remaining project execution. This process is referred to as the static version. Compared with the static version. Uh, we will define we will define a dynamic version. Um, uh, after rescheduling the remaining project execution, the critical team might be changed, uh, and the RCSRA and the RCSRA values of project activities uh, might be changed as well. Um, Therefore, the RCSRA metrics are re-simulated re after corrective action. Uh, this, pro uh, this, uh, this process is referred to as the dynamic version. Mm. To validate our proposed RCSRA metrics, uh, some experiments, uh, some exp uh, some experiments are performed. 
the results show the dynamic version is preferred. The dynamic version is preferred for parallel projects, while the static version is suggested for serial projects. The RSSI performs in general uh, performs performs best in general, while the SSI is still reliable for low RC projects. Um, in practice, for low RC projects, if the critical chain is not easy to identify. If, if the critical chain is not easy to identify, the SSI is still able to identify high risk activity, high risk activities. Finally, the results show the sequential strategy is preferred for parallel projects, while the normal strategy is better for serial projects. In this chapter, we will discuss the risk analysis and project control with the resource limitations. The goal of this chapter is to compare the top-down and bottom-up project control with the resource constraints. In the introduction, we have briefly discussed the top-down and bottom and bottom-up project monitoring approaches. EVM is a well-known top-down project monitoring approach. Uh, SRA is used to monitor is used to uh, monitor the project the activity progress in bottom up project monitoring. However, in literature, most of the studies ignore the resource constraints. Therefore, both EVM and SRA may, may not provide the reliable warning signals in resource constraint projects. In this chapter, both both EVM and SRA are extended to resource constraint projects to monitor the project progress and generate warning signals. Once the warning signals are generated, the project manager needs to take corrective actions, as we discussed in Chapter 3. Um, in resource constraint projects, if we take corrective actions, the resource and presence conflicts may occur and, and prolong the project duration. Uh, therefore, three scenarios are defined with a different focus on, on resource conflicts during the corrective action taking process. Before we introduce the three scenarios, the two new concepts are defined. The local redshift and global redshift. The local redshift allows a redshift of future activities without delaying the project duration. The global redshift allows a redshift of future activities as long as the resource con conflicts can be solved. This table illustrates the similarity and the difference between three scenarios. The no resource conflicts, the no resource conflicts scenario allows corrective actions when no resource conflicts occur. The local resource conflicts scenario allow not only, uh, not, not, not only allows corrective actions when no resource conflicts occur, but also allows corrective actions when the resource conflicts can be solved using the local right shift. The global right, the global um, resource conflicts scenario allows corrective actions when no resource conflicts occur, and also allows corrective actions when the resource conflicts can be solved using global redshift. To monitor both top-down and bottom-up project control approach with resource constraints, some, exper some, uh, some experiments are performed. The results show the no resource conflicts scenario performs best which means avoiding resource conflicts during project execution is efficient and easy to use. The results also show for low RC projects, the top-down project control is preferred is prefer for serial projects, while the bottom-up project control is advised for parallel projects. For high RC projects, both, uh, uh, both project control approaches can be equally used. In this chapter, we will talk about the impact, the impact of control points on the uh, risk analysis and project control with the budget and resource constraints. 
uh, we discussed about the control points briefly in the introduction. The control points are defined as the timing to monitor the project progress and take corrective actions. Mm. The goal of this chapter is to review the impact of control points on the project monitoring and action taking process with budget and uh, with budget and resource constraints. Uh, in literature, there are two types of control points: the, peri uh, the periodic control points and the milestone control points. Uh, in the periodic in the periodic approach, control points are set at fixed intervals according to the planned work. Uh, the planned work can be expressed in time and cost units. Uh, therefore, a time approach and a cost approach are proposed to determine the control points. Uh, for the milestone approach, control points are set at the end of important activities. Uh, however, the importance of activities can be, can be determined in different ways. For example, the risk approach, uh, the risk approach uses the SRA matrix to uh, uh, represent the uh, to uses the SRA matrix to determine the risk information of a project of a project activities. The priority approach makes use of the priority rules to associate a priority value to each activity to represent the importance of a project activi activities. The subnetwork approach works slightly different. Uh, each activity with its total successors or total predecessors are composed to a subnetwork. The complexity measures of this subnetwork are used to represent the importance value of project activities. Once, uh, once the control points are determined, the project progress um, is monitored to, to generate warning signals. Uh, in this chapter, we consider both projects without resource constraints and projects with resource constraints to examine whether the control point approaches are equally used in both types of projects. Uh, in literature, most of the studies focus on the uh, focus on the optim uh, focus on the optimal timing of control points for project monitoring. However, we believe the control points which are good for project monitoring but not necessarily good for taking corrective actions. Therefore, in this chapter, we will examine we will also examine uh, we will also examine the impact of control points on the corrective action taking process. To validate our proposed control point approaches, some experiments are performed. The results show the risk and, and priority approaches are preferred for projects without, without resource constraints, while the priority approach is suggested for projects with resource constraints. Um, the results also show for projects without resource constraints, the priority approach is recommended is recommended for parallel projects, while the risk approach is preferred for uh, serial projects. Uh, for projects with resource constraints, high priority approach is uh, advised for low RC projects, uh, while low, low priority approach is preferred for high RC projects. Uh, in this chapter, we will give some general conclusions and uh, 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 and, uh, and talk about the future research. We have proposed some project control technologies with budget and resource constraints. Chapter two concludes, the way top-down project control should be optimized depending on the availability of budget for, correct, for actions. Chapter three concludes, the use of RCSRA metrics depends on the resource constraints. For low RC projects, the SSI and RSSI can be equally used. For high RC projects, the RSSI performs better. Chapter 4 concludes the use of top-down and bottom-up project control depends on the resource constraints. For less resource-restricted restri projects, 
the bottom-up project control is better for parallel projects, while the top-down project control is, is better for serial projects. For more resource-restricted projects, the difference between both the control approaches is marginal. Uh, chapter 5 concludes the way to set control points should be optimized depending on the availability of constrained resources and topological network structure. For projects without resource constraints, um, the priority approach is better for parallel projects, while the risk approach is, be is better for serial projects. For projects with resource constraints, Mm, the high, uh, high priority approach is better for low RC projects, while low priority approach is better for high RC projects. Mm, uh, for our future research, first, we will improve the integration of different project control processes. Second, we will study the impact of change the impact, the impact of changes in the mean and variability of activity durations without and with corrective actions. Finally, we will validate our approach on real life projects. Thanks for listening. All the questions are welcome.